What's going on, wrestling fans? It is I, Steve Fall, and welcome to Tank Count. On today's edition, I'm talking to one of my favorite people of all time in professional wrestling. It's Mickey James. How are you doing today? So good. Do you mean that? I 100% mean that because your career has been everywhere. But now, Impact 1000 just aired last night, and you have made your triumphant return to Impact Wrestling. Now, let's talk about this for a second. When were you cleared to come back to Impact? Um, well, I've been cleared for a while. I've been cleared for a minute, um, and I have been waiting and biding my time. Because, honestly, I've been sitting back uh, as I've been, you know, preparing. I, I went to France and did a show, and I did the UK. I just kind of get in the ring back again before I just showed up on TV, right, make sure I was feeling good. But I've been watching my friend shine. I mean, Trinity, I think I left, and I was certainly sad, you know, to have to relinquish the title and stuff. But then I've been able to sit back during all of this and watch my friend come in and shine and take over the division. And it's been beautiful to watch. So, you know, I feel like I've been cleared for a while, but I was enjoying the moment and I wanted, you know, her to have the, that moment. And but then, you know, here comes Impact 1000. And I just felt like it could not miss a dose of hardcore country. Uh, there was so many women that I shared the locker room there, both before and now. It was the opportunity to be in the ring with Awesome Kong, who I've never been in the ring with, um, you know, and share a stage with her. So uh, I just, you know, I, I think back to my history with Impact Wrestling, and I was there from the very beginning, the very first TNA show. Um, all the way to, you know, the very first TNA pay-per-view, all the way to the birth of Hardcore Country um, and in like 2010. And then to come back this last time after Empower and the last rodeo and all of that. And I was like, I want to be there in New York for this incredible celebration because I knew it was going to be a night um, to celebrate, you know, and celebrate the past, the present and the future. So um, yeah. Man, your history with Impact, though, you brought it up from CM Punk to Raven to, you know, Atara. There has been so many connections with you and professional wrestling and Impact. But this moment last night on Impact, you know, having the beautiful people and Awesome Kong and Gail Kim, all these legendary Impact talent all together, including yourself in the ring. What's the difference you feel like from when you first started with Impact, the knockout locker room to now? Wow. Um, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I think that the impact, the knockout division has always been special, you know, and it's always been special because it was a movement. It was like truly a movement. And, you know, when I first came back to, cause obviously when I was there the first time, it was really special for me because as Alexa Suri, I got to be alongside Raven, um, alongside my friend, CM Punk, my friend Julio De Niro, and we were the gathering, you know, and I was not, I was not grunge. I was not punk. I was not, I was a country girl from Virginia trying to figure out what can I buy at Hot Topic that's going to make me look dark and grungy and dirty or whatever I'm supposed yeah. to look like. And all I could think was I'm going to wet my hair and I'm going to wear the Hot Topic stuff, you know, but thank <laughs> God. For, you know, but I think about like all that I learned underneath there. And I was the first woman to do the clockwork orange house of fun match who wouldn't be done again until years later by my friend, my sister, Daphne was the, I think the second woman to ever do it. Um, and so I had a, like, a, I, you know, when I think back to, you know, they didn't have to give, and I was in the ring with, Jeff Jarrett at the time and and to be in those matches and to get hit by a chair and all these things that you would never assume from the women or like the opportunities that the women would get in that that thing in that time then to go away and obviously go to WWE and become Mickey James and all of that and while that was happening even you know as the you know Divas era is starting the knockouts era is starting and the poll like the polarities of those two when you look back of like it was gail kim and awesome kong and i said this the other day to jamie to velvet 
who um, I go, you know, and the reactions, you, you hear the people and you can see, um, you know, alongside a lot of people don't really throw as much credit back to the beautiful people who were a massive catalyst in the women getting more time on television because the ratings were so high in the beautiful people segments that they would then go like, well, the women need two segments. You know, there's not, we need, they need two because they get the highest ratings. And then obviously when you have performers like Gail and Kong out there killing it. And so it was like, and you think about those two different dynamics as well as like what they represent in women's wrestling and, and like, you know, the beautiful people were sexy and they told you and, but yet they would kick your ass. And, yeah. you know, they were, they checked all those boxes where Gail is very serious. And yes, she is stunning. One of the most beautiful women I've ever seen still to this day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the fountain but, of youth. Where did she get it from? Where is it and give it to me. Um, just like, but also very cerebral and like, loves this business to the finest detail you know and then you think of an anomaly like awesome kong and you really didn't see that at that time in women's wrestling and so then you come forward and and it's just it's just wild you know so there's so much like differences that have happened but the one constant is that the knockout soccer room will take care of the knockout soccer room like yeah. It will not, we do not like, because we are one team because we recognize that, you know, if we all, if one rises, we all rise, you know? And so there are no sour grapes in our locker room because we'll squish you. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it won't squish you. Delicious wine. Yeah. It's just the wine. <laughs> From all me. that whining. No, it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's amazing. It's amazing because we take care of each other and it really truly is. Obviously it's a competitive sport and it's a lot of that that goes into it, but there is a genuine sisterhood. And I think that it was beautiful to celebrate at impact 1000, the, you know, the longevity of that locker room, the different flavors that have come through that locker room and then to hear the people and go like every single one of these women were, and are beloved for different, very different reasons. And that's for their originality and authenticity. And that is something that we truly celebrate at Impact. And I just love that so much. And yeah. Yeah, of course. I hope, you know, I hope uh, when people are on next week as well, in this amazing, huge match, we're going to have all the knockouts, you know, someone needs to yell like the pigeons. I remember that, the, let the pigeons fly. That was Taz's big let thing. Let the pigeons he... loose, baby. Yeah, my God, man. I, yeah. That's a, I, I never knew what that meant, but we'll we'll find out someday maybe. But recently um, though, Trinity though, did, it didn't it? some type of meaning. Yeah, it has a meaning that, we, you know, Pete, let's, let's keep it pg uh the recently trinity was in an interview and she said this about you uh the one person i look forward to being in the ring with is mickey james we never really got to get going we never touched or been in the ring in the wwe but we never got an angle or a real feud or anything like that now how do you respond to this because clearly she is saying like yeah we were in the ring a couple times here and there but we never had an angle we never had a storyline and it seems that we she wants this match. so we never uh, even had a singles match oh We've had tag matches, um, eight girl extravaganza, 10 girl, um, you know, different things like that. But we've never had a one-on-one -on -one match, Trinity and I. We've been on the same team. We, I don't, I'm like, have we been on opposing teams even? You know, a lot of times it was like we were on two different shows or right. so we'd only see each other for the pay-per-views and stuff like that. But clearly like she said, wants you one-on-one -on -one, though. Clearly she wants want one-on-one -on -one match. One -on -one. I want this one-on-one -on -one match too. You know, when I think I, I, I meant what I said, like I've been I feeling good for a while, but I've also sit back, been sat back and I've really truly been enjoying her run as champion. I've really truly as a sister um, and as a friend have really been loving all of these moments and seeing her get this opportunity and doing exactly what I knew she would do. And that's shine. And it's, and it's beautiful to see. And so even though the, it was one of kind of my apprehensions of like just coming back anyway, I'm like, I really want her to have all of these opportunities. But now I look at it and I go like, 
she's ran through a lot of that locker room. She's ran through pretty much the entirety of that locker room now since she's been there in this short time and really dominated. Obviously there's other women that are back um, and that are coming back. So I'm sure that they won an opportunity at the championship too, but I must remind her and the company that I never lost that championship. I never did. I had, I was forced to relinquish it. Um, and I understood that and I did that. Um, and now that I've sat back and I feel like, okay, maybe she's running out of competition. Maybe it's time for a match that both of us want. I feel like that the people want and that we've never seen before. And if I'm going to say, okay, if I'm going to test myself and go after it again, like I, as in anyone who is a wrestler and is walking into a wrestling, you know, television show or television company, if you're not vying to be champion, then what are you doing? Right. I agree. And I like being champion. It feels good on me and I, enjoy it i love seeing my friend shine but i think i've like I sat back and watched her glow uh this whole time and i was getting a little antsy and first you know dipping my toes in at, at impact 1000 and just being there for all of that that was super super special um but again memphis is not too far from home we literally drive there and i was like oh definitely want to show up there and just maybe see see what's in well, store for hardcore country. Um, but, you know, I also think like, oh God, Trent and I, if we were tag team champions, could rule the world. So, huh. so many things that we can do. The two women power trip. I like it so much. We could get that going. Collect all the gold. Just collect all the gold in, in Impact all Wrestling. All of the gold. Well, some of it's silver, actually. It's not That's really. That's true. Well, you know, I have to bite it. Is there chocolate inside sometimes? I, I'm not sure. But, you know, yeah. I, to remind the world, October 21st, Bound for Glory is coming up, the biggest event of the year for Impact Wrestling. So, Dean versus Trinity it sounds pretty good to me. Sounds like a headliner is what it sounds like to me. Sounds you know like what a main it event. Sounds like money. And you know, it's it, it is the wrestling business. So yeah, let's let's do yeah. that. But you know, speaking of business, point? though, there is a two night. Mid-South Mayhem coming up September 22nd and 23rd. Impact Wrestling is coming to your town. Now, what can fans expect when they attend an Impact Wrestling event? Because I've been to so many wrestling events across the world. And every time I go to Impact, though, there's like this like this buzz, this feeling of like us against the world. But yet it is a great, great company that is doing amazing business. It's always been a great company that's been doing amazing business. You know, I think that uh, Impact, honestly, in my opinion, is one of the best wrestling shows on television, in my opinion. I mean, I and, and I know that people are like, oh, favoritism or whatever. No, I'm a storyteller and I love telling stories and I love um, telling stories not only in the ring, but like to get to that moment in the ring of why you are having this match in the first place, right? And I think that a lot of companies do a great job, but Impact does a real great job in investing in their stories and investing in their talent. Um, so it's not just like throwing stuff together, like throwing matches together or, or throwing someone out there and saying, okay, sink or swim, let's see what happens, you know, to really get people invested in them. But also our live events and our shows and our TVs are so fun because there's not just the show, obviously, and the ch opportunity to see all of your favorite superstars um, perform in these different types of matches. The women get different opportunities, knockouts get different opportunities that you may not see elsewhere. Um, but there's a lot of other fun things that we do that we love to give back to the fans, whether it's like um, you might meet and greet someone before the show or after the show is often something that, you know, they don't really do that at other companies. And, and we do that to kind of give, fans an opportunity to maybe meet their favorite and take a picture or something like that. Um, and I think it's really fun for us because we can get a genuine gauge from the audience directly before and after the show of like, you know, what's working, what's not working. Or if you feel like you need to switch something up, like the fans will let you know directly or indirectly. I always hope for the indirect. <laughs> Just FYI. 
<laughs> it's hard to I sometimes I guess it's hard probably to get all the fans to rally yeah. together around yeah. one, I one group of people. Can we take a picture? <laughs> yes. Oh, I've definitely been there. Where like someone told me once that like, I'll slap you in the face if no one's in the room after the interview's done. Can I take a picture? Yeah, of course. You just told me you were gonna slap me in the face. What the Yeah. What the Luckily you have all that cushion. I do have the cushion. Hopefully they slap me here and not here, but right. Well, right. you know, it's, it's got to grow somewhere. It's coming out of the chin. <laughs> that would be a weird place to slap somebody though. On like top of their forehead. Yeah. Slap you in the forehead. Right. Usually it's a slap across the face. Never like, I'm going to get you yeah. right here. Yeah. Um, but again, tonight, mid South mayhem again, set for Friday and Saturday, September 22nd and 23rd Graceland live in Memphis, Tennessee. Amazing. I'm so excited for that part. So that's going to be fun because you know, you know, little hardcore country and the king. Hey. All, all. That's, that's my terrible version of singing your song, but you know, I was Thank looking you. up on YouTube recently, impact wrestling, and they have like the top 10 returns or uh, debuts, and you're one of them as well, which is great because, again, you coming into Impact, again, you brought up 2010, and then uh, I technically you were, I guess, murdered by James Storm at some point, and then returned from Back from the Dead. I'm guessing right. Rosemary yeah. had something to do with that, with using yeah. the, her powers. But, um, from the undead, yes. Yeah, from the undead realm, you know. But this, this is so much happening. You know, again, Bomb for Glory, uh, Don West and Mike Tanay are going into the Impact Hall of Fame, and two such oh great it's too oh, oh my god look at my phone i didn't even realize it looks that bad on camera but that is my donald <laughs> sticker that will live there for until i have to replace this phone or replace the case I don't yes know. It, the fact that they're inducting these two men the voices of impact wrestling for so many years like decades it feels like do you have any um mike today or don west stories you could share with us that maybe people don't know because the enthusiasm don west had for professional wrestling I, yeah. it was contagious oh my god i have i mean i love mike today and i love don west so so much um I think, and I was actually just talking to Velvet about this the other day, um, and my husband will tell you this story, and he can do a Don West impression as well um, of it, but Don, we, so when we would do a lot of the Impact shows on the road, um, there would be oftentimes, like, these signings in between, and if you're, you're, if you're a fan, if you remember these, if you came to an Impact show, Don West selling the brown bag special and he would be praying for me jamie velvet and jeff hardy to be part of the meet and greets because he would get so excited and the things that he would say like i don't know if he was saying them on purpose be to just legit pop me yeah. in the background of like at just talking it up but he's so so funny but um i just i we're gonna we miss don west he was he was you know, truly a gem um, of a human being, but also a gem of the business. Um, and I think that him and Mike were, their chemistry together was just beautiful. You know, like they just bounced. That's the thing about commentary. Like when you find your perfect, like almost like commentary soulmate and you uh, just have that perfect chemistry together. And I feel like they truly, truly had that. Um, and Mike is obviously one of the best in the business. He always has been, still is today. You yeah. can at me if you don't, you know, but um, yeah, so it's pretty, it's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm excited to be there for that, hopefully, and to see my friend go in and also to celebrate a friend that we lost um, not too long ago. So, yeah. yeah, Don West will forever be one of the most passionate members of the Impact roster, not just Impact in general, professional wrestling in general, because I, I'll remember Elix Skipper walking across the cage and doing a hurricanrana off a cage and Don West just losing his mind. And there, people still use gifts of Don West and Mike Tanay for anything, for sporting events, for excitement of them slapping their hands and yelling. It was an yeah. oh my God moment. But again, there's so much happening. Like just like last night with Impact 1000 Night 1, next week with Impact 1000 Night 2 because it was such a big event. It had to be two nights and of course bound for glory coming up october 21st the biggest wrestling event in impact wrestling so do not miss that fingers crossed mickey james trinity main event knockout championship so let's hope that happens but mickey it has been a pleasure talking to you today right here on 10 count as always like i said at the top of the show one of my favorite people in all the world mickey james uh -huh. because the world loves you they love your podcast they love when you're on busted open check Thank it out you. 
Of course. I appreciate that. I really do. Thank you. Of course. And it's time for me to get the hook, wrap up the show. So <laughs> thanks for being here again, Mickey James. I'm Steve Fall. She's Mickey James. Have a great day, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.